someone has to speak up for light. Anne Frank said, observe how one candle can both divide and define the darkness. 470 years ago, Galileo's telescope saw its first light. Galileo was the first human to see the moons of Jupiter or the rings of Saturn. But learned minds of the day literally refused to look into Galileo's telescope. Why? Because it showed things orbiting around something other than the Earth. If you were to go to an astronomy lecture in 1609, you would hear every confidence that Earth is fixed at the center of the universe and the sun and planets revolve around the Earth. Anyone looking up at the sky can see the planets sometimes appear to move backwards in the planets. To explain this retrograde motion, scholars of the day imagine epicycles, circles within circles, to explain the motion of planets. Epicycles are very popular at the time because any scholar could come up with their own epicycle theory. Some had between 40 and 100 epicycles. The mathematics of epicycles were very complicated which meant that only a very learned few could understand them. In Galileo's time, there was another controversy, whether there was any speed of light. Many great minds, like Johannes Kepler, for instance, thought light simply traveled instantaneously. Galileo himself suggested timing by placing lanterns on distant hilltops, but Galileo lacked a distant enough hill or a good enough clock. Galileo could only conclude that if light had a speed, it was too fast for him to measure. Now, the first evidence that light had a speed came from one of Galileo's discoveries, the moons of Jupiter. In the 1670s, when astronomer Ole Roma arrived at the Paris Observatory, there was a mystery involving the Galilean moon Io. At times, the moon would appear from behind Jupiter later than astronomers' calculations predicted. Only Roma realized this was due for the time taking Io's moonlight to travel across the solar system to Earth. Only Roma predicted that on a certain day, Io would appear from behind Jupiter exactly 10 minutes late. On that day, Roma's prediction was right on the money. Almost no one believed it. The director of the Paris Observatory, Domenico Cassini, was a fine astronomer for whom the Cassini division in Saturn's rings and the spacecraft now orbiting Saturn were named. But Cassini refused to believe there was any speed of light. It would ruin all his calculations. Well, today, we know that the speed of light is part of our physics. It's 299,782 kilometers per second. It's also an integral part of special and general relativity. Now, we are testing a hypothesis, which is explained in a very simple expression. Here it is, gm equals tc cubed. It looks simple, doesn't it? This is a way to express the entire universe in one simple expression, where g is Newton's gravitational constant, m and t are the mass and the age of the universe, and they are all linked by c, the speed of light. This is one of the simplest equations ever, but it explains many of the mysteries of our universe. It actually predicts that the universe began in a big bang, expanding many times faster than today's speed of light. It tells us how the universe began, why it expands, it even tells us whether it will ever stop expanding. It also solves one of the biggest mysteries in science. Physicists in 1998 observe distant exploding stars, type 1a supernova. They claim that their redshifts were increasing non-linearly, indicating that the universe's expansion was accelerating. Now, an accelerating universe would violate any number of physical laws, starting with the first law of thermodynamics, conservation of energy. To explain these so-called accelerating redshifts, physicists had to imagine not epicycles, but a repulsive force, a mysterious dark energy that would cause the universe to accelerate. Now, dark energy theories became very popular because anyone could come up with a dark energy theory. 
The more complicated, the better. Dark energy theories are so complicated that only a very few could come up with them. Someone has to stand up for light. Not far from the Einstein statue in Washington, D.C., is the monument to another Nobel Prize winner, Dr. Martin Luther King. On the rubber wall behind Dr. King is one of his quotes. Darkness will not solve darkness. Only light can do that. The answer to so-called accelerating redshifts might not be in imaginary dark energies, but in the slowing of light. If we place this equation in the accelerating data, it explains the so-called acceleration precisely. It's not the universe accelerating, it's light slowing down. Plato said, we can easily forgive a child who's afraid of the dark. The real tragedy is when men are afraid of the light. Now, Galileo suggested timing of light with lanterns at distant hilltops. We've had a distant hilltop since July 20th, 1969. This is a lunar laser ranging experiment left on the moon by Armstrong and Aldrin. It consists of quartz corner reflectors, like bicycle reflectors, which allow astronomers with lasers on Earth to make precision measurements of the moon's distance. All things change with time. We've long known that the moon's distance from Earth is slowly increasing due to tidal action between the moon. Now, LLRE has measured that distance at 3.82 plus or minus 0 0.07 centimeters per year. But that's too fast. If the moon were today gaining angular momentum at that rate, it would have been in the same place as Earth barely a billion years ago. And studies of lunar samples, which I was privileged to participate in, show conclusively the moon is nearly as old as the solar system. Four and a half million years. Fortunately, there are other ways to determine the moon's orbital definition. One of those uses fossilized sediments called tidal rhythmites. Left behind when the tide washes sediments onto an ancient shore. This Mansfield sediment found in Indiana tells us that over the last 300 million years, the moon has been receiving an only 2.9 plus or minus 0 0.6 centimeters per year, differing by more than a third. Another method comes courtesy of ancient astronomers. We have reports of eclipses going back thousands of years. When a, an astronomer in Babylon has recorded a total eclipse in 136 BC on a certain day, it provides a precise measurement of how Earth and the moon's orbit have changed. A study of more than 2,700 years of these eclipse reports shows the moon has been receding at 2.82 plus or minus 0 0.08 centimeters per year. The laser ranging experiment differs by 12 standard deviations. A third experiment involves numerical simulation. The tidal interaction between the Earth and the moon can be very easily modeled in a computer. Our 2004 simulation calculates that the moon is today receiving 2.91 centimeters per year, agreeing exactly with sediments and eclipses. Three entirely independent experiments agree that the moon is moving more slowly, about 2.9 centimeters per year. The LLRB disagrees by 12 standard deviations. Physicists often look for two to three signals as proof. This is a 12 signal proof. Why? Well, if the velocity of light were slow, time for light to return from the moon would increase each year, making the moon appear to recede faster according to LLRE. This equation predicts a discrepancy of exactly 0.935 centimeters per year, matching the 12 sigma anomaly with less than one tenth of a sigma. This is one of the most precise scientific predictions of all time, far more precise than, say, the precession of Mercury. And B 
These results were published in the peer-reviewed Planetary Science Journal in 2012 and have been downloaded and cited more than 10,000 times. Oh, you're welcome to look at it. It's a free download. But today, if you, if you take BART or Caltrain to university and go to an astronomy lecture, they will tell you with every certainty that the speed of light is fixed for all time, just like the Earth. Unfortunately, enough friends believe in the power of learning and light to have built this, the space station. The other way to complete Galileo's experiment is to build a better clock. The atomic clock ensemble in space is designed to be the most accurate ever. In orbit, an atomic clock is more accurate than any clock on Earth because Earth's gravity will not interfere with the vibration of cesium atoms. ACES is funded by the European Space Agency, built and due to be launched aboard ISS in 2017. One of ACES' primary science goals is to search for anisotropies or changes in the speed of light. The change in the speed of light will be very tiny, near the limits of detection. Will ACES find it? Will physics be turned upside down? Time will tell. Anyway, it, I appreciate you inviting us here. Thank you very much for your attention. It, it may sometimes seem like a very dark time for women in science. Wars, terrorism, unemployment. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. All things change with time, even light. Ideas change with time. There's only one equation in this book, but an equation can have more than one form. In, in the units pioneered by Max Planck, it looks like this. M equals R equals T. This must be the most simple equation ever, but it relates everything within the universe, its mass, its size, its age, to the tiniest Planck units, the tiniest units in nature. This shows that those Planck units are a curiosity. They are fundamental. This is the key to understanding the very nature of time. The thermodynamic arrows, the cosmological arrows, in other words, why time flows in one direction rather than another. And thank you again for your time. I believe we will shortly see a big change, a sea change in physics. Thank you again.